Okay, then you have something to you say. You mean that point. is uh, 0 0.5 per annum. Annum. Each per annum. Yeah, yeah. Let me say this, my friends. One of the great arguments about globalization is this. And you know, before COVID, right, the PAP were waxing lyrical about how wonderful globalization was. And actually, you know something, in the West, after the 2008 financial crisis, the people already knew that a new order was needed. The new liberal order, which gave rise to so-called globalization, was dead in the waters. Why? Because globalization, neoliberalism, made the rich richer. All right? The poor poorer. The middle class stagnated. Real wages, ever since the West got into this neoliberal model in the late 70s, middle class wages stagnated. It was 40 years of a reckless experiment. Yeah. Started by Reagan and started by Thatcher. I think Lee Kuan Yew jumped on board and Singapore went on a neoliberal trade ride. And you know what? The figures that have just been cited, 0.5% for 21 years. That shows you how much real wages have stagnated, haven't they? Yeah. All right. And you know something? You think that over 21 years, your increase in wages, I, I think someone told me the other day when they work out for a cleaner who earns 1,400. You know, the effective increase every year for that cleaner is $8. $8. You think that that $8 has been able to cover this cleaner in the last one year? as a result of this ridiculous inf inflationary pressures we have had. You know, when GST goes up by 1%, and people were telling the PAP and Lawrence Wong, please don't increase, because it will exacerbate inflation. You know, you and I, who are the end consumers, don't end up paying 1% more, right? Every step of the way, the intermediaries, all right, increase 1%. You know? And so many people have complained, hey, actually at the end of the day, I'm paying 20-30% increase. It's not a 1% increase. I'll give you an example, although this is not a, a common example, right? I, I must say, I'm very fond of going to a coffee shop in Telukura to eat a meal, which includes my miso soup and all that. Six months ago, this meal cost me $17, of course. It's not just miswa. Miswa doesn't cost so much. It has meat and other things like that. Then you know what? Seventeen dollars became nineteen dollars. Nineteen dollars became twenty-one dollars. You know, last week when I had the same meal, it cost me twenty-three dollars. Wow! In six months, this meal has increased by thirty-five percent. All right, and. You have to look around you. Suddenly, a five-room HDB apartment in Ang Mo Kyo is renting for $6,500. Yeah? I mean, I think less than 10 years ago, you know, I, I heard people talk about renting out HDB apartments. It was never more than $2,500, $3,000, right? So, my friends, it is not just BTO prices or resale prices that have become so expensive. And you know, that is, our, that is the number one complaint of people when we go on our walkabouts. Yes, people complain about the cost of living, but I'm telling you, the first thing they tell us and the first complaint they give to us is the ridiculous price of HDB, whether it is BTO or resale. Yeah? And it, it not only affects our young Singaporeans who are trying to start a family. And Han we said, you know, our total fertility rate is 1.05. My friends, you need a TFR of at least 2.1 to even just reproduce yourself. Yeah? 
1.05 is 50% of that. If you don't do something to arrest it, I'm telling you, in a few decades, Singaporeans are going to be near extinct. Alright? I'm going to learn Shanghuge, who said, essentially absconded. So I'm going to say near extinct. Okay? And but yet, the population keeps growing, right? And they keep bringing in foreigners, yeah? They do that. You know? And why? Why is our TFR so low? I mean, Indrani Raja can, you know, talk till the cows come home. The policies will not change. Why? Because we have a government that refuses to clamp down yeah, on price increases. Don't come and tell me about the free market. There is no free market in the world which does not have regulations. Yeah? For HDB, which is essentially public housing, it is something that the government can well control, but they refuse to. You know? Yes, the higher the HDB prices, I suppose you have to pay more stamp duties, right? Okay, why you run away? You know, man, uh, are you happy, Henry? No, actually, <laughs> actually there are things, you know, like for example, a lot of people just say, oh, high cost of living, they need to pay more money. But there are people who actually have to pay their job. That means they actually lose their job because of the high GST. Give example how it happened. Like for example, I have children. So in my housing estate, there are people who sell probiotics drinks. Okay, which brand? There are a few brands uh, okay, that is selling at my housing estate. Then... If you go to the shopping mall, it has grown to about 50 cents, 30 cents to 50 cents increase. Okay. Then after that, that imagine if, if like you have three children or how many children, right? Then this increase, this kind of probiotics drinks to the children is like a luxury. Yeah. So a lot of families decided, okay, I'm gonna cut off this kind of probiotics drink, I'm not gonna have it. But how are these employees being paid? They are not paid hourly. They are being paid based on commission. So it is fully commission based. You have to sell in order to get your salary. And they, these people nowadays, they don't sell because people are cutting down on their cost of living. So a lot of them just lose their job overnight. Yeah, Just because of the, of the 1% GST increase on the spark of midnight, they lose their job the next day. You know, can I add something since we are talking about the loss of jobs? Yesterday morning, I was in a taxi. I was driven by a very nice DJ who's 69 years old today. All right. He was previously with a salvage company. He was a seaman with a salvage company. You know, salvage companies are companies that rescue vessels in distress, right? Out at sea. Okay. There are very few of these salvage companies around. And he had a good job. He told me he lost his job to a foreigner. After that, he became a technician in a construction company. Again, he lost his job to a foreigner. My friends, you know, I don't think you will find another political party like PV that has been so firm and strong in our position that Singaporeans must have priority for jobs. All right? Those are good jobs. And I'm telling you, if PV is in government, we will never ever allow a Singaporean to lose a job to a foreigner. An irresponsible 